this is Cody Mathurney and welcome back to Instant Health and Vacation. Today's workout, we're going to work out our chest. We're really just going to focus on our chest today. We're going to get that burn and we're going to get it sore for the next day. So let's get right into it. Let's get into our warm up. Just jump up and down with our legs a little bit. Get our arms working. And really, for this workout, I'm just going to focus on stretching the top of my body, my upper body. So just clap the back a little bit. Hug yourself. All right. Let's get some arm circles with our right arm going forward. Big circles right here, big range of motion. And let's bring it back. Here we go. There we go, good stretch. Then we go to the left. Take it back now, y'all. Two hops this time. It's the cute show. All right, then we go forward. All right. Go back again to this. Now, right here, I'm going to cut my shoulders forward, squeeze my hands together, like such. Let's round out our backs. Hold this for a good 10 seconds. Now, this is also going to stretch out my shoulders and my back. But when we do our chest, we're also working on our back, because they work in correspondence with each other. And then squeeze. And if you have to, bring your hands in. If you're not that flexible, but if you can, go all the way down. Nice squeeze. And let's go back. It's raining outside today, which is a perfect excuse to stay inside and get a good workout. Here we go, and let's go back. Just like that. Whew. And since I am just focusing mainly on my chest today, this warm-up's really quick. Like that, I'm feeling good. Get some forward arm circles going. And then let's bring it back. Here we go. All right, y'all. That's about it. Let's get right into the workout. All right, y'all. We just finished our warm-up. Let's get right into our workout. Real quick with the workout today, we're going to do our six workouts as usual, one minute per workout. We're going to do two rounds, a 60-second break at the end of each round. I want you to rewind it at the end of the first round and start it over with me. That way you can get your two rounds in, and if you want to push it, you can do three rounds. Now this is going to burn, but it's a good burn. It's the burn that we're looking for. And as always, make sure you have some water with you to stay hydrated. So the first workout we have for you today is push against the wall. Find a wall, set your clock for 60 seconds, and you just want to push. And right here, you're just going to feel that tension all throughout your shoulders and your chest. It's like somebody's trying to come in, trying to get to you right now. So you just want to push against the wall, keep you from coming in. Right here, I'm in a good lunge position. This back leg right here is pushing against two. So I'm not just using my chest only. If you want, you can switch it up. Keep them out, keep them out. I'm just kidding, I want to see you there. You get the point. See, you see how my arms are shaking right now? That means I'm really putting some tension on the wall. And that's what I want. I'm fighting for dear life right now. Keep it going, we're almost there. Go almost in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, a few more seconds. Ah. All right, that's a good start. Next one I have for you. So a lot of these workouts we have today are going to be isometric. We want to switch it up. We want to trick our body, trick our body. Because if we keep doing the constant same thing, our body gets adjusted and we don't see results. So the next one we have for you here is our wide push-ups. Just like the other one, we're gonna stay in a constant, stay right here. We're just gonna hold it in a nice isometric hold here. 20 seconds like this. Everything else is hurting on you, but you're focused. See how we're doing. Looking at a 45 degree angle to the ground. All right. Let's switch it to a regular grip push-up. Here we go. You want to go halfway down, elbows in, looking forward. If you have to, go to your knees. See me right now, but now I'm jumping back up. I'm already feeling it. It's burning bad. Three, two, one. All right. From there, we're going to go to our close grip push-up. Right here, squeeze tight. You want to make sure you're about halfway down, too. Elbows in, keep that chest tight, squeezing it, and breathing. Stay focused. Look, I'm dropping to my knees, it's starting to burn. 
We're almost there. Get back up. Five, four, three, two, one. Stay right here. 
Now, if I really want to, I can get higher up. And the higher up it is, the harder it is. And if you really have it in you, throw out some push-ups. There you go. Stay focused. See me? I have to take a quick break. And I jump back in. If you have to, I find that this is a good way to take a quick break. Give the chest a break. And then you get back into it. Remember, keep my butt tight, my abs tight. You can see my arms shaking. I get a few more push-ups in. Uh, here we go. Almost there. Uh, how am I doing? Uh, Z5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. It's all about right there. Push it. It's not easy. There's nothing easy about that workout. But I guarantee we take a 60 second break right now and then we're going to get right back into it. I want you to rewind it and start it right from where the workout is, not the warm up. Do another round with me. You'll see what I'm talking about tomorrow. Good job, y'all. Keep it going. Alright, y'all. So you either just finished your second round or you're jumping out of that third round. Either way, Great job, that's a very challenging workout. Now we're gonna get into our cool down real quick. And this is where we wanna relax and just cool those muscles down. So let's get back into our slapping our backs for our good job that we did today. <sighs> Breathing. All right, into this one. Open up my door right here. It's a nice easy chest stretch. Put my hand and I'm just gonna let it stretch. Keep this here for 30 seconds or so if I want just to really feel it. You see how I'm moving? When I move my arm in different directions or my hand, it's stretching different muscles throughout my entire chest. Now look, an important thing with this, don't overstretch it. Don't hurt yourself. You'll know when you're overstretching. Alright, so look, from there, I'm gonna turn it over, get my right side. Something's going a little too far, lay off. Because it definitely is possible. Oh, good job. Alright, for this one, I'm gonna get back into this place. Back, circled out like this, puffed out. Hands together. And then let's go back, stretch it out. My wiggle so I can get more room. So for today's recipe, we're going to be doing something for you. We're going to be making a chicken piccata, which is a lemon-based sauce. And we're going to be doing it over a sweet potato spaghetti and roasted in asparagus. Now most people would use regular spaghetti, but we want to lay off the carbohydrates. So we're going to give you something different, a little healthification here. We're going to use some sweet potato. But before we get into that, let's clean our hands because we know that the key to healthification is sanitation. So let's just do a quick clean right here, especially after a workout. Hopefully you've taken a shower, but if you're like me and you want to get your meal in real quick, just clean your hands and get the basics done. So real quick, just a few things that you'll need for this recipe. I got some chicken right here, boneless chicken. I got my sweet potato, asparagus, extra virgin olive oil. We have some capers. Now we have lemon, 
and we have garlic powder, we have black pepper, some salt, I got my water boiling, I got my two saute pans here, and you will need a little bit of all-purpose flour, some clear wrap, and uh, I'll tell you what this is in a second, you might not have it, but there's a lot of options with this, and uh, something to shave the sweet potato down. Alright, so real quick, what I want to do first is, I want to take my sweet potato, I just like cleaning it off real quick, get all that dirt off, because you know, you know right, once it comes from the farm, you don't know what they got on that stuff. So, I'll take my peeler real quick, got a plate, and I'm just going to peel my potatoes. And I don't know if you saw me on another video when I did this, if you don't have a peeler, there's another option you can do, take your knife. Be safe when you do this, and you can just slice it off. Now it's gonna take longer, but um, it's just as effective. Nothing wrong with that. All right. Sweet potato is one of my favorite foods still. I don't know about you. But look, let's say you're not big on sweet potato, and you wanna do something different. Now you could use a regular potato. You could use, what else? Use something hard, because we're going to be making this into a spaghetti, so you don't want something that's a soft vegetable, and when you peel it and you, you make your spaghetti, it's just going to like wither into nothing. Alright, so I got this out of the way. Now, let me show you this cool invention that I picked up, and you can get this from Bed Bath & Beyond. Let's cut the edge off right here. Now, this thing right here, this is the spaghetti. And uh, in case you didn't pick up on the name spaghetti, so it's vegetable spaghetti. And it's really simple. Just put it in here, and look, you just turn it, and that's that. And look at that. <laughs> now we got ourselves some spaghetti. Well, this is it. Now, I'm sure that most people at home don't have this, so what's another option we can do? You can take your peeler. If you have a peeler, and this is more like a, this is more like a linguine, you know? I don't know. An angel hair pasta, who knows? Give it a different name. It'll just be a different texture. But you just do this. And then if you don't have this, what else can you do? Well, you can do back what we were talking about. And I just do light shaves. And this right here, this is gonna be thicker. Right, but since I do have my tool, I'm gonna go back to it and I'm gonna get the most out of it. All right, I'm done with that. So that's my spaghetti for me right there. Forget about that for a second. Here we go. I'm gonna put this on a plate for you, and we'll come back to that. So next thing we got, let's prepare our chicken. I got boneless chicken right here. So this is why you'll need the clear wrap. You're probably like, what's this guy doing, man? He's got clear wrap, he's got knives, something's not right here, but we are cooking food, okay? <laughs> so just lay my clear wrap out like this. And what I wanna do here, I'm taking my chicken, I'm gonna lay it down. Here you go. And go back to my clear wrap. And I'm gonna pound this meat. Now, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but when I'm saying pound the meat, I mean I'm gonna be tenderizing it. So don't be getting any crazy thoughts in your head. All right, so here we go. Like this. I got my knife, that's what I'm gonna use. Um, anything heavy will do. And uh, just take it like this, pound it. Really, I'm trying to thin it out somebody at work you can't stand and it's your boss get some frustration out here you go bam 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 all right and then what the plastic wrap does is it keeps the meat intact and it keeps it from breaking there we go and it helps it from making contact and spreading germs on my knife or whichever object you are using all right there we go, that's it. Separated, 
And that's going to make that meat so much more tender. It's just going to melt in your mouth when you take a bite. It's going to be fantastic. Now, what do I have for that? I have some all-purpose flour. I'm not even going to put egg on this. Now look how thin that is. It's like paper thin. And that's what you want to get. Now, if the meat breaks a little bit, is that okay? Yeah, it's not the end of the world, so don't worry about that. Okay, so put that right there. I'm going to go to my pan. I already, had, I already had it heating up a little bit. Popping the heat back on high. Put my extra virgin olive oil in. There we go. So you need about three tablespoons. Spread it around. Let it get heated up on there for you. Now my chicken, and this is lightly breaded. Just gonna lay it in there. When I say that's gonna be quick, I'm saying two minutes at most on each side and you're done. Because we still need to make our sauce and we're gonna put our chicken in with the sauce. So it's gonna continue to cook for us. Look at that, it's a nice piece right there. Okay, so right there, take my final piece. And be, be careful when you take it off the plastic because it does have a tendency sometimes to stick. All right. Sprinkle it off, a little amount as possible. And there we go. Just let that cook for one moment, look at that. Okay, so let's clean our hands off, get the flour off, get that chicken off. I wanna clean my hands again. So, got my spaghetti ready, got my chicken cooking. Next is the asparagus. Now, asparagus don't take a long time to cook, that's why I saved them for last. So I'm gonna go back to my cooking board over here. And since I did have my chicken on the plastic wrap, I'm not worried about using this cutting board again because the chicken never made contact. So what do I do? I like to cut off about an inch off the edge of my asparagus. It's usually the white parts. I'm gonna be quite honest with you. I don't really know why I always see that or why I've always done that. Personally, I think it gets more fibrous at the end and it's really hard to chew. And it's just not as clean of a flavor. So that's why I think you cut them off. But um, you should test it out and see what you think. So I'm going to get my other pan rolling right here. And this is going to be for my sweet potato spaghetti. Throw in my asparagus. My water is already boiling. Got it on a high boil. And that's going to take about two to three minutes on the asparagus. Not long at all. So chicken's cooking. You might want to get a spatula or something like that to flip it over with. Go back to my normal ways. Yeah, there we go. And you see how it's already getting white? That's a sign that it's all, almost done. When you're cooking chicken, pork chops, a lot of white meats, once the meat goes from that beige color, I'd say, to a white, then you know that the meat is done cooking. Especially since this is so thin. Okay, so next step for us, we need to make our piccata sauce. Now, so for the sauce, we have olive oil, the capers, the lemon, and we have our garlic, pepper right here. And I didn't want to season up my chicken too much because the sauce itself is going to have a lot of seasoning, so we don't want to overdo it. So this chicken right here, I'm happy with it. Just take it off, right there. There you go. Ooh, look at that, see? So thin it fell, but that's all right. We're not worried about that. So I'm gonna drop the heat down to a low heat. And the reason I'm dropping it down to a low heat, all this stuff that we cooked the chicken in, that's all flavor right there. So we, we wanna keep that flavor, and we don't wanna burn it. I got my whisk. Get some of my flour. And look. Very important thing when you're doing this, you just sprinkle the flour in, very little. Very little flour. And really what we're making here is a roux. And a roux is a base for our sauce. Yeah, there we go. 
So, what I want to do, I'm going to take my wine, my white wine, and we're using a Sauvignon Blanc. Any white wine will do. Woo! There we go. That's about a third of a cup I just put in there of white wine. Yeah. And that's deglazing right now. All right, so now we got our roux on. So that's gonna be our flour, the olive oil, and I have some white wine in here. Now something I did forget to mention earlier, you're gonna need some onions and garlic. And we're gonna put that in our sauce and let that cook down in that white wine. There you go. And it depends how much sauce you want. You know, if you're a person who likes a lot of sauce, I would say maybe put in a little more wine. A little more virgin olive oil. I'm putting some more garlic powder right here, just a dab, because I already have garlic in there. Some black pepper, just a pinch, and some salt, very little bit. Yeah, put that on a, a low heat, medium to low heat. Yeah, look at that. And me personally, I just want to add a little more white wine. There you go. And that white wine is going to cook off. So really, we're going to have the flavor without the alcohol. But not as much. So if you have kids, don't worry. They're not going to get a buzz off of this. Right All right, here we go. Now, key ingredient for this dish, capers. Capers have a lot of salt in them themselves, so I'm not going to put too many. Maybe about a teaspoon of capers and some lemon juice. Little secret, keep the lemon up, keep the seeds up. Yeah, there we go. And this is a lemon-based sauce. Just like that. No seeds, good to go. Uh-oh, one fell in. That's okay. Now, the color's gonna start to darken up a little bit. You see how the, I like to say this is loose. You see how it looks watery? But that's fine, that's no problem. What I'm gonna do is, I'm adding a little flour. And the flour is a thickener, thickening agent. Okay, and you don't need a lot, I mean a sprinkle will do. It's gonna thicken up quick. Now that the sauce is almost done, I'm gonna take my chicken, I'm gonna lay it in there and let it really soak up all the juice. Here we go. Yeah, come get a look at this. Now you see how it is? It's already thickening up on me. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to just let that sit at a very, very low heat. Okay? So I got my spaghetti right here. Keep rolling on that. Put some extra virgin olive oil. I didn't even put this in the water because it's so thin it's going to cook up on its own. And you don't really need to worry about boiling it. This isn't like pasta. Okay, here we go. Alright, look at that. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's soaking up all that juice and flavor. So I'm gonna put this on the back. That's done cooking. And that's the one thing about cooking. I got four things going at once right now. Some people might not like it. I love it. I love having a lot of stuff to do. Keeps me on my toes. Okay, and so to get my asparagus out, I'm just gonna lift them up right here. Oh yeah. And drop them in. It's too big for my pan. <laughs> but that's okay. Because they're already cooked. The only reason I'm putting them in here is to get a char on them. And I'm putting just a dash of salt, a little pepper, and my favorite ingredient in the world, lemon juice. I think, I think asparagus with a char is one of the tastiest things you can have. There we go. And so I just want to mention one thing. We are. Uh, we're gonna be having some white wine today with our meal. The white wine I've chosen is called Matoile. 
and it's a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Now, the reason I chose it is because we have lemon in our dish, and it's one of the main ingredients. So I really wanted to highlight that. There we go. Oh, there we go. Sometimes it doesn't want to cooperate. So this right here is going to have a lot of lemon zest. So when you eat your food, it's just going to bring out that flavor so much. It's a nice crisp flavor. It's going to pair really well. And since we are having a white meat today, I think a white wine pairs perfectly with it. So uh, cheers. Oh yeah. Good to go. So look, it's been about two minutes, three minutes on this sweet potato spaghetti. Not long at all. I still want to keep it al dente. I want a little crunch with it. I don't want it too soft. So I'm ready to plate right now. Let's put it right here. There you go. Fill the mountain. Okay, now it's time to put my chicken on top. Lay it across there. There you go. Let's get some of that good sauce on top because that's what we really love. Oh yeah. It's gonna have garlic, onions. I hope you like onions. I love onions. Depending on how much you love onions, you might want to decide to put a little less or a little more. Yeah, there we go. Nice thick sauce with that. And Berries. Oh yeah, look at that. That's the char I love. That's really that's the flavor right there. Oh, it's perfect. Look at that. Woo. There you go. Save a little bit extra. So everybody, here we go. We got our chicken piccata over our sweet potato spaghetti, roasted asparagus with lemon juice to finish it off. We got good protein here. We got some great carbohydrates, some complex carbohydrates with our sweet potato. So the protein's gonna repair the muscles. The sweet potato is gonna give us energy for the rest of the day. And the asparagus is gonna have minerals, nutrients, just a bunch of goodness, all right? So uh, take it easy. Remember to subscribe and uh, stay healthy.